I've got that tickle like I need it. I'm breathless. Like the air can only come again if I feed it. And I'm getting restless because even though the blood in these veins has never tasted cocaine, it came from a man who couldn't stop it. All he gave me was his jeans, like a hand-me-down without bothering to sew in patches. There are still stains in the form of his hands from every time he was all he could hold on to. And I lose reality sometimes too. Splits in both the knees from every time he wore them thin, unable to stand. Only I'm wearing them now. And the holes he left mean if I fell, I'd hit skin. My throat is getting dry too. Not so much from thirst, but from that insatiable need to feel the burn. I will, I will not pretend I don't understand why he would have rather been numb. Numb. I wonder if that's what it felt like when he took the drugs and they took root in his stomach that last time. I wonder if it was easy. If he was so far gone that he couldn't feel his organs falter. I wonder if he was seeing so many meaningless colors or if he was writhing. If the pain in his dying muscles flared as he vomited onto himself, body giving anything to try to stop the inevitable, I wonder if he felt himself die, and if his pitiful life flashed in front of uncomprehending eyes, accomplishments I could count on one hand. So much pain, he was reminded why he chose to die, and I wonder if in his last moments, he conjured up an image of me. I thought I might be mad. A hushed voice in the back of my head thought with terror that I might be relieved, but I felt nothing. No. When they brought me his things to sort through, I counted the boxes. One, two, three. One, two, three. Why aren't there more? Eight days. That's how long it took someone to find him. Decide for yourself. What kind of person can be missing but not missed for so long? I wonder if the person who found him read his letter, or if my father's bitter hatred made their stomach churn until it forced them to stop short for fear of losing their lunch 12 pages. That's how long it took him to write out the last things he needed to say. I didn't read it because I couldn't bear to give him the satisfaction of blaming me and don't think for a second. <coughs> that he wouldn't have wielded his words like a rusty weapon to cut into me. It was the only way he could prove that he could still win. I thought it was over. I thought so many insects and so many hot coals had taken away the only man I had ever truly hated. I didn't go to his funeral, didn't even recognize the man in the pictures, didn't politely accept the condolences from so many onlookers who thought I should be hurting. I thought I would never have to confront him until one day I looked in the mirror and the eyes that looked back at me were so empty of emotion, I was afraid to place them. I have his shoulders. I have his cheekbones. I have his eyebrows and his ears, and a piece of him is in every wrinkle of my fingertips. And every time I wake up in the middle of the night and wonder if this is all there is, I can feel in the back of my mind how easy it must have been to just give in because I guess I inherited his heavy heart, too. Every heartbeat is a labor, and every breath is an atrocity, because I can never be clean of him. I thought I would never have to face him again, but I find him in my own face every morning. He told me I could never be anything. But I had something in my favor all along. One hope for my future, one chance to prove him wrong. There's one reason I will be better than he'd ever been. Because I had a father like him. Thank you.